welcome beloved to episode 84 as we glorify the name of the Lord and give him praise and worship him in this wonderful time as we see the fulfillments of the word of the Lord so get your Bible it's yet another song of us the sons of Korah actually this one it's about the sons of Korah and we are grateful to the Lord for what is helping us it's 15th of September 2024 and the time is 2 13 in the a oh no, the p.m. yes <laughs> it's in the p.m. and we bless the name of the Lord for the people of God in the nations the people of Accra it's 11 some of you this is your broadcast for the day you know um, in Addis Ababa with the same time we thank God for the people of God in um, Lisbon still the same place in San Salvador it's early in the morning we glorify the name of the Lord as we make this live in Honolulu it's one in the morning what a joy to see what God does when we just connect in different time zones and glorify his wonderful name in this episode that we title favor and honor it's a, a great delight to bring to you episode 84 i am malcolm david and this is season 8 of 150 days of psalms lots and lots of testimonies but we bless the name of the lord for this opportunity for us to be able to read god's word and to pray in the top of the day for some people and here in our time we are actually on the um the 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 seventh watch in terms of the uh, the times of the word of god and uh it's such a delight to be able to you know just read god's word and to receive great great messages i am malcolm david it's a delight we commence with a worship hallelujah a worship hey! we worship you lord there is none like you you alone you deserve our worship you deserve my worship I worship you Abba Father I lift up my voice and worship you Lord I worship you hallelujah anything that is not of you within me Lord it must bow <laughs> the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the sound of the blast of the ram's horn. <laughs> May every wall surrounding your glory crumble. Every wall surrounding your glory. The glory of God in your life. Let the wall crumble right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of come on as you worship him. Ah you alone. You alone. You of the Lord my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest need for herself where she may have her young a place near your altar oh, oh. a place near your altar a place your altar, Lord Almighty, my King, 
and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place. Ay, 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 ay. How lovely is your dwelling place. Ah. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Bakar, they make it a place of springs. Hey, the autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till it appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O oh God. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O oh God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper. <laughs> I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. I would rather, I would rather, I would rather. In the name of Jesus, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Ay, 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 ay. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Psalm 84. According to Gittith of the sons of Korah, a psalm. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. today we have just gone through Psalm 84 in a different way and now we head out to the book of Proverbs chapter 10 in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ we come to Proverbs now Proverbs 10 what a delight to be able just to worship the Lord and to give him praise and to honor him and to love on him and to glorify him because it's not a rehearsal. When we worship the Lord, it's real. It's active. The word of God is living. It's active. He's, he's sharper than a two-edged sword. Favor and honor. He bestows favor and honor. Psalm 84 and verse 11. The Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from them whose work is blameless. We come to the book of Proverbs. Beloved, if there was a VIP section, I would give Proverbs. I would give it to Proverbs 10, Proverbs 3, Proverbs 1, Proverbs... All Proverbs 31. <laughs> powerful, powerful. Let me tell you, these wonderful words of the Lord Jesus Christ empowering you as an intercessor. 
having an insurance, having an assurance, having an assurance that whatever you are praying, God has already made a way for you and you will be able to experience answers to prayer. You can read, you can sing the scripture, you can be able to meditate on it, you can be able to allow God's word to become alive in you. Proverbs 10, and we are going to read it, Proverbs 10 from the NIV, what a delight, what a joy to be able to do that. So as you get your Bible, you can uh, get hold of this video later on and just replay back, you know, that spontaneous worship the Lord just gave us from Psalm 84 and we give glory to God for enabling us to do that in his presence. Hallelujah. Bring greetings in the most excellent name of Jesus Christ from the land that bears the name Kenya. And I bless the name of the Lord for all of you watching the people of God in Athens, Greek. We give glory to God for Minneapolis and the people of uh, Islamabad. Islamabad. You know, now we don't have to really uh, do any much uh, of, of uh, wondering will the gospel reach to far, far places. As long as the Lord has enabled the internet signal to get to places. He has his angels that are able even to put messages before people and people are able to listen to the scriptures and people are able to be blessed and be able to be refreshed and be able to be transformed in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are one of them watching via YouTube or somewhere, just be able to drop us uh, in the comment section where you're watching from and that will be a blessing to just know and pray with you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Proverbs 10 and this one is actually one proverb that will quicken you if you've been lazy any area of your life if there's been slothfulness in any area of your life proverbs 10 is one of those proverbs you need it's a proverb of solomon but it's one of the proverbs that you need to consume and receive direct wisdom beloved you know uh there are certain medications that need to be administered to a sick person. For example, there are those which are given in tablet form, which somebody swallows in capsule form. Someone swallows and it goes to the stomach and disperses. But there are others that are infused. They are put directly into the bloodstream. And those times when people need direct infusion, Proverbs 10 can give you a direct infusion of wisdom about life and about even things you're doing and especially as an intercessor you can be able to get to proverbs number 10 and be able to see how you've been praying have you been praying foolishly or have you been praying with wisdom and praying with wisdom is one of the most amazing things because praying with wisdom is praying with the fear of the lord so as we shift gears as we continue to ascend in season eight as the lord himself is helping us so much is being released even by the grace of God. Proverbs 10. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son grief to his mother. Ill-gotten treasures are of no value, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry. But he thwarts the craving of the wicked. Now listen to verse 4. Lazy hands make a man poor. But diligent hands brings wealth. Now this verse is not only about where you can say to me, Oh, you know, Malcolm David, I don't have work to do. But do you know, lazy hands, is a, a, it gives you an example of your, of your action. Hands represent actions. So if your actions are lazy, even in terms of prayer, even in terms of your spirituality, reading through scriptures, you know, sometimes when you think about a scripture, you say, oh, this is too long, I cannot read all of it. I recommend daily, daily infusion of God's word, the book of John, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, the episodes of Paul, the book of Revelation. Be able to, you know, get your hands diligent and you will also be brought to a wealth of spiritual knowledge and understanding. So in this way, you will also be able to see that as you work, God will bless the work of your hands. 
He said, even something that you did not consider that it can prosper, God has the capacity to make it prosper. And God has the capacity to lift you from one level to another level. As you consecrate yourself, consecration requires work. It requires your hands to be busy. It requires you to say, I will not walk in the way of slothfulness. I will not walk in the way of sin. I will not slander. I will not be partakers of gossip and spreading of words that I don't know whether they are right or wrong. Lazy hands make a man poor. But diligent hands bring wealth. He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son. But he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Blessings crown the head of the righteous. But violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous will be a blessing. But the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart accept commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. Now, I want you to be able to, you know, take heed of the following Proverbs from verse 8. It says, the wise in heart accept commands, meaning that they take careful instruction, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. If you find yourself talking for the next 10 minutes when you are with people and it's only you talking, that is known as chattering. If at all you are not speaking words or you are not teaching them or you are not preaching, you should limit your chatter so that you are not a chattering fool. Because when you are a chattering fool, it will come to ruin. Proverbs 10, 9, it says, Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will soon be found out. 10. He who winks maliciously causes grief and a chattering fool comes to ruin there we go again yet repeated a chattering fool comes to ruin verse 11 the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked it says hatred stirs up conflict but love covers all wrongs Beloved of God, you need to check about the emotion called hate. The moment you have hatred, even hatred of animals. I told people somewhere, even when you don't like pets, be careful that that will not be termed as a, an emotion the enemy can use. Emotions are very, very crucial. The moment you just allow emotions to flow in your life, without you checking on those emotions, those emotions will be parachutes of demons and wicked powers to operate in your life. And they will stir up dissension. I know once of someone who says, I don't like these people. I don't like this. I don't like this. I have outright hatred. Notice, hatred stirs up dissension. There are some emotions you don't need to have in your life. Love covers a multitude of wrongs. Verse number 13. Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning, but a rod is for the back of whom lacks judgment. Wise, the wise store up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool invites ruin. Say the wages of the righteous bring them life, but the income of the eve of the wicked brings them punishment. <laughs> wages of the righteous brings them life, income of the wicked brings them punishment. He who heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. He who conceals his hatred has lying lips, and whoever Spread slander is a fool. Now, these words slander and a fool have something to do with lack of fear of God. Because the fear of God brings wisdom and foolishness. It says the fool says in his heart, there is no God. So if you find yourself in the midst of slander, even if it is a, a, a meme, even if what you are slandering about is true, 
there are other things you should be talking about because if you come to spread slander you put yourself in the side of a fool it says when words are many listen i said again when words are many sin is not absent but he who holds his tongue he's wise let's work a handbrake you know <laughs> earlier in the week uh in the course of duty i found myself um hiking up mount olulokwe or sapashe in samburu and as we were ascending that mountain you know it was easy but one of the locals actually pastor john was the one guiding us he said to us that kupanda ndio raisi kwa hii mlima kushuka ndio ngumu hey i said but climbing a mountain is supposed to be easier it's supposed to be harder then coming down a mountain how is it becoming uh, you know more difficult then when you are coming down is when i noted what this guide meant this wonderful man of god he meant it is so slippery you know like as you are coming down the road the the rocks are not firm so you step on them and you know it goes you know you skid off you kind of skid off and i looked at it and i said wow wow i'll tell you more about that definitely i'll tell you more about my experience of mount olulokwe and how i hiked this was my second attempt i reached the second higher peak the first attempt we reached the first peak in 22 on uh, in november 2022 and now we came back and we attempted to hike until the top and we reached only up until the second peak it was very very hot and i'll tell you more uh, about this in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ god bless you so this is what he says he who conceals is hated has lying lips and whoever spreads slander is a fool when words are many sin is not absent but he who holds his tongue is wise so this one of holding the tongue is came up to my mind about the mountain and how we were coming down the mountain and um uh you know another guide uh, a warrior his name is gabriel he said to us weka handbrake ya mgu <laughs> he said put a handbrake on your feet when you're coming down because it was very steep so now i thought about this verse and i said he who holds his tongue is wise you need a tongue break you, there are some things you need to say and break ya mdomo nya masa kabisa kwa jina la yesu because when ma words are many sin is not absent we need to know where the tongue break is where the hand break of the car is we know because you put it up where the foot break is we know because you press it in what happens when you step on the foot break what happens when you step on the when you pull the hand break the vehicle immediately is stopped the vehicle immediately cannot move all the tires are tied this beloved is a moment for us to know Proverbs 10:19 that when words are many sin is not absent but when you hold your tongue you have wisdom and favor and honor will be your portion favor and honor will be your portion the word of the lord says in the book of psalm 84:11 the one we just worshiped through it says that the lord is a sun and a shield hallelujah he bestows favor and honor no good thing will he withhold from anyone whose work is blameless now the work of blamelessness requires silence if you need to experience blamelessness walk in silence walk in silence choose not to say many words because when many words are there sin is not absent but when the words are from god if you have to be given 20 minutes and the 20 minutes you're going to spend it fully on the word of god not trying to fix the politics of your country not trying to fix anything but bringing the words of the lord thereby you will walk in blamelessness but the purpose the moment that you begin to walk away from blamelessness is the moment when the words are many so you have to choose not to have uh not to have too many words coming out of your heart and spirit and you will experience favor and you'll experience honor verse 20 
The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little value. The lips of the righteous nourish many, but fools die for lack of judgment. Then he says, The blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no trouble to it. Whereas the opposite is the blessing from the world brings wealth as well but adds trouble to it. That's the difference. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no trouble to it. The blessing of the, of the world brings wealth and adds trouble to it. I will not go into that now. Verse 23. A fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. The wicked dreads, what the wicked dreads will overtake him, but the righteous desire will be granted. I want you to picture yourself on a highway. And the thing that you, the wicked are dreading will overtake them. It will overtake them. It says that the blessing makes rich. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and has no sorrow. But the wicked, what the wicked dreads will overtake him. Now, people of God, it's important for me to slow down a bit. Because this is a lot, <laughs> a lot of good things. You see, in Genesis, um, chapter 42 and verse 36 it says their father Jacob said to them you have deprived me of my children Joseph is no more and Simon is no more now you want to take Benjamin everything is against me what the wicked dreads will overtake him. The cross reference of this particular portion, we find it there in Genesis. Genesis 42:36. You can be able to go look at it some more. In um, Isaiah 65, verse, verse 7, it says, Both your sins... And the sins of your fathers, says the Lord, because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defied me on the hills, I will measure it into their laps. What the wicked dread, right there in that cross reference. I continue to give glory to God for enabling us to record this in different time zones and in different moments and in different places. In Kinshasa, our wonderful neighbors, it's 12... 41 as i record this on the 15th day we bless the name of the lord for the midnight watch in hong kong you see dear intercessor i want to encourage you to pray all the time because the holy spirit as of the days of old the days of old probably the people could be able to you know uh we can see different time zones and different things that people were praying but now paul writes to us and say pray without ceasing so in as much as we know about the watches of prayer in the bible they don't limit us from praying anytime pray all the time read the word of god all the time meditate on it let that favor and honor be bestowed upon you beloved let me tell you something it is not possible to hide a light in the darkness you cannot hide a light and you should not be a secret service christian this is something that i must say it though it costs you everything you have get the wisdom but do not be a secret service believer the one who people are not sure is that one a believer or not she has a or he has a secret about god that he does not want to share with anybody beloved of god let us live out our favor and honor to the glory of God. Because God bestows favor and honor. Hallelujah. No good thing will he be withhold from them whose walk is blameless. No good thing will he withhold. 
whatever God desires to release to you, it will be released. It will not be, be it will not be given out to somebody else. It will be your portion. It is your portion. It is already your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. You operate at the head and not at the tail. What a delight to see this. So Proverbs 10, 24, it says, What the wicked dreads will overtake him, but what the righteous desire will be granted. Verse 26, it says, As vinegar, no, verse 25, it says, When the storm has swept by, and the wicked are gone, that when the storms have swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever. Verse 26. As vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so are sluggards to those who send them. That is how God views laborers that are sluggish. In fact, it is detestable to be sent of the Lord and to be lazy and to be sluggish. It is actually something that is detestable to the one who sends you. Favor and honor is not bestowed upon laziness. The fear of the Lord adds strength to life, adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. The prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. The way of the Lord is a refuge for the righteous, but it is a ruin for those who do evil. Verse 30, the righteous will never be uprooted. But the wicked will not remain in the land. Verse number 31. The mouth of the righteous comes. From the mouth of the righteous comes the fruit of wisdom. But a perverse tongue will be silenced. Verse number 32. The lips of the righteous know what finds favor. But the mouth of the wicked only what is perverse. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, let this word become flesh. Oh, hallelujah. Let this word continue to, to flourish and to grow. Let this word continue to help us. Continue to, continue to glorify your name. Let this word continue to be a blessing to the nations. Lord, there is none like you, Lord. You are wonderful in how you're dealing with man. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We magnify your name. Come on, lift up your voices wherever you are. And just honor the Lord and receive favor and honor. Favor. Favor, favor. I release my spirit, soul, and body. Let your favor, let your favor, let your favor, let your favor, Lord. Let your favor and honor be bestowed upon us, your children. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing. Ah. No good thing does he withhold from them whose work is blameless. Verse 11, 
The Lord is a sign and a shield. The Lord bestows glory and honor. No good thing will he withhold from them whose work is blameless. Ah, you alone deserve it. You alone deserve our worship. As they walk through the valley of Bakar, they turn it into springs. Oh God, you are wonderful. Hallelujah. 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 The seven hallelujahs. Of the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. The people of God in uh, Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, Salt Lake City, San Francisco, San Juan, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, Venezuela. Oh my Lord. Oh my Lord. The people of Seattle, Washington, Tacoma. Florida. Oh, hallelujah. May God help this nation of America. May God help the nation of Congo, the nation of Israel. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Woo, woo, woo. Glory to God. Revelation. Revelation. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. You know, when we come to the end of self, that is the place where a new territory begins. When the self completely bows to the Lordship of Jesus, when the self gets out of the seat and allows the Spirit of God to sit upon the seat and upon the throne of your life, let Christ be the center not the first, not the last, but also the center. That let Christ be first. Let him be center. Let him be last. Hallelujah. Revelation 19. After this I heard what sounded like a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For great for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute. He cor who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes on for goes up forever and ever the 20 and four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped god who was seated on the throne and they cried amen hallelujah then a voice came from the throne saying praise our god all you his servants you who fear him both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Then the angel said to me, Write, Blessed are they who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, 
Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers who hold on to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. Beloved, there we get a very profound truth about the testimony of Jesus. If you withhold the testimony of Jesus, everywhere you go, the spirit of prophecy is upon you. You don't need to look for somebody to prophesy over you. The moment you have the carrier of the testimony of Jesus, worship God, worship Him. Let there be intention in your spirit. Let there be an intention for you to worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. Verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are blazing fire, and his heads are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one, no one at all, knows but he himself. Oh, hallelujah. This verse gives, you know, the moment, the first time I read this scripture, it, you know, I felt something like in my physical being, you know, an awakening that there is a name that gives, the Lord gives that no one knows apart from you that is given. Hey. Then it says he's dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him. Riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen. White and clean. Out of his mouth came, come, comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He who treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has... This name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw angel, I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in the midair, Come, gather together for the great supper of God so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men, of horses and riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with him, the false prophet who performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fairy lake of burning sulfur. Woo -hoo -hoo. Hey, if you've been in a laboratory, sulfur does not smell good. Sulfur, hey, hey, just that image itself is yellow in color. Sulfur, for those of you who don't know, sulfur and sulfur has a horrible smell. Now, the two of them, the false prophet and the beast, were thrown alive into the fairy lake of burning sulfur. The rest of them were killed with a sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse and all the birds gods themselves on their flesh. Revelation 19. Beloved, there are some scriptures that the enemy doesn't like people knowing about. You see the, the entire book of Revelation. If you check the number of people that have had time to read it over and over and over and over and over the book of revelation 
until it opens. There is a place you must read the scripture until the scripture open. It opened itself. They said then the Lord opened the eyes to the scriptures. They understood the scriptures. They begin to understand the scriptures. There is a place you arrive. There is a place that you come. There is a place of favor and honor. Not just about these local material things. But there is a place where the Lord has bestowed favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold. I come to mention to someone. If you are here, or you know somebody somewhere playing around with sin, <laughs> sulfur, panning, liquid, fiery lake, fiery meaning that it is fire. There is a lake of sulfur. Hey, the smell of sulfur. You wouldn't want to have the smell of sulfur. It's a horrible smell. In fact, when it is in form of an acid it burns sugar to black carbon that is what sulfur does chemically sulfur is also used as a medicine but <laughs> sulfur in itself you can imagine that the enemy knows him and the beast and the false prophet are going into the lake alive the rest of them that were killed with a sword that came out of the word of the rider of the horse and all the birds guards on them by on their flesh who are these people kings generals mighty men horses and riders free and slave small and great bestowed honor You know, honor is not something you can work hard for. You can hire bouncers, you can hire security team, you can hire cars to follow you everywhere, but you cannot bestow honor on yourself. You cannot bestow favor on yourself. The word of the Lord as we came across, it says the Lord bestows. It is Him who bestows. Proverbs uh, Psalm 84. Is a song, is a, is a gittith, is a, a psalm of the sons of Korah. You know, the book of Psalms is just, we've been reading it, reading it, reading it. The Lord continues to teach us every time, reading it, reading it, reading it. And through here, using it as a springboard into other books of the Bible. And the hereby, Ensuring that we are constantly studying the scriptures and reading constantly the scriptures. Not for our embitterment for ourselves on earth, but majorly to receive this wonderful place called blamelessness. The work of the believer is to walk blameless. Psalm 119 verse 1. Psalm 119 is also one of the things that i would encourage you to regularly challenge yourself to meditate upon it if lawyers can be able to have the whole constitution tucked somewhere in their words even if they don't memorize all of it they know ah this one is a bill of rights they know this one is a criminal thing this one is a domestic this one is a civil they can tell they can look at it a lawyer can just look at what the matter is and they can just begin their english for you dear believers, even a fundi, by the way, even a cobbler, the guy who, sho who makes shoes, he has a language for making his shoes. The person who, uh, even in, in, uh, in photography, like uh, the field that I am, there's some language, there's a language we talk about, aperture, shutter speed, what I saw, all those things that when you listen to them, they'll make no sense to you. Child of God, make the word of God permanent in your life. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless who walk according to the law of the Lord. Finding yourself in a situation where the Lord demands character from you. The only way character can come is not by your education or academics. It is through suffering. There is no other shortcut. It is through suffering. 
that you get perseverance and perseverance brings about character and character brings about hope Romans chapter 5 let me give you that one very quickly because many times you know people end up believing the wrong things in scripture because they have been told something different they go to this conference the lighting everything looks good and what but then when they come to the ground things are very different I come to mention to you, always have an expectation to walk according to the law of the Lord. Even inside that church, you will be tested. You will be tested. They will, somebody will sit on your seat where it was clearly written your name. They will sit there. And then you feel the fire burning. Don't you see? Don't you know how to read? It is written, Reverend Vivian. <laughs> This is exactly you on a test. The Lord wants you to test. This is just a small example of what happens. Now let me read Romans 5. Romans 5. I uh, want to... Um, oh, I just love the word of God. We just have to end shortly. But before we end, I want to mention something that um, that is very, very crucial. Okay, now listen to this very, very slowly. I'm going to go read this very, very slowly so that you get it very, very well. Let it sink in your spirit very, very well. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom? We have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts. By the Holy Spirit whom he has given unto us. You see God, the moment you gain access by faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I see this picture very, very well. Gain access. You must gain access by faith into this grace which we now stand. It's not going to come by tapping. I don't know where tapping is. Tap? What are you tapping? You're running, chasing people of God everywhere. But you do not want to settle and hear the word of God. The anointing cannot be bought with money. You cannot buy the anointing. In fact, when there was a man called Simon the Sorcerer, in the book of Acts, he saw the apostles lay hands on, this, on, the, on the people and they be filled with the Holy Ghost. And the man said, here is some money. Can you, take, can you give me that power also? So that when I lay my hands on people, they will also be receiving the same thing. And the apostles say to this rich sorcerer, he said to him, get behind me. He said to him, may your money perish with you. Can you imagine? Today what would we be doing? Different. Money answereth all things. The love of it is the root of all evil. The moment we align our spirit to what will we gain. Let me take you quickly to this place. It's very important for you to, do, to get to know this one. In the book of... Uh, is it uh, Timothy? Second Timothy it is... Is it 1st Timothy or 2nd Timothy? Let me see that. Yes. Welcome Esther. Karibu sana. It says that Ah, this scripture need to be broadcasted everywhere in the earth. It says if anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree 
with sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching. He is conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant frictions between men of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and are trapped and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. Psalm 84 verse 11 The picture that the Lord bestows upon us that says to us that the Lord bestows favor and honor. The Lord is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from them whose work is blameless. That picture itself, it says that godliness with contentment is great gain. But here we find people teaching false doctrine and don't agree to sound doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word favor and honor is interchangeably meant to seem to be like in form of wealth and uh, material gain. But the scripture tells us that the unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy and strife and malicious talk and evil suspicions and constant friction between men hey, of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth. They don't have the truth. The truth was taken away a long time. Now they think godliness is a means of financial gain. He ask, what about all that fuel you are using? Where do you get it from? Who supplies it? <laughs> My father in heaven has a way to take care of his kingdom business. If you come to the realization that God is calling you into the work of reaching out to the lost, to the lost souls, you must begin in your Jerusalem. You must begin in your Jerusalem, wherever it is. Then you go into your Judea and Samaria. You can't start right away when your Jerusalem is in ruins. You must begin like Nehemiah. Rebuild the walls of your broken down. If you still have brothers you don't talk to, sisters you don't pray with, you can't talk to them. How can you go for the lost? The king in, over there, hey, there are questions. They will ask questions. So, now that you have come, in whose authority do you do these things? Now, this is not going to be physically what you listen to. You may be carrying favor and honor from men, not from God. Is the one who bestows favor and honor. The moment you choose to receive favor and honor from the Lord, hallelujah, it says, no good thing will he withhold from them whose work is blameless. These passages of scripture are very important for us to have internalized so that we understand that godliness with contentment is great gain. So that we understand that we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. So that we understand that when we think we know what we know, we humble ourselves and say, Lord, teach me. I humble myself. <sighs> now let me tell you the story about my hike. <laughs> So I took this uh, hike in the week. We were doing some feature and I was um, taking some friends from one of the media stations to go up and ascend the Mount uh, Olulokwe in Samburu. It was one of the assignments that is so unique how God just, you know, just asked me what you have in your hand. I have my camera. So we went up the hill. So as we started to ascend uh, Mount Olulokwe, before we started to ascend, 
I had my bag and um, I don't know if it's nearby yes I have my bag here let me show you now I had this huge bag this one this one here and it had almost 10 kilograms 10 kilograms here about uh, 20 pounds of uh, of weight so I thought to myself let me not leave my luggage down with the with the truck I want to go up I want to go up, I want to go up, I want to go up with it. I want to enjoy perseverance. I want to see what perseverance looks like. I want to see what perseverance is like. Let me go up with my 10 kilos. My friend, as I began to ascend the mountain, as I began to go up the hill, it reached a place I could not walk up that hill. And the rest of the people went ahead of me. And I was painfully scaling the mountain, painfully, painfully. And I went up to the second peak. It took me about four hours to walk. So as I walked this mountain, beloved of God, there is something that I learned. That the moment you focus on the greatness of the assignment, you lose power. The moment you look at just where you are stepping, and forget about the weight you're carrying and you begin to go up slowly and you begin to step one step at a time 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 beloved it reached a place ah i can feel the pain on my back from that kilo those kilos i was even carrying water for some friends and i held my hiking uh, pole and I rested and that had happened before breakfast I didn't do breakfast at all we left very early beloved I remembered in weakness then is my strength made perfect in weakness then my strength is made perfect. In weakness, my strength is made perfect. And I began to say, Lord, I thank you for your strength in my weakness. Ah. And I continue to go on. Now at this time, as I walk, sweat was like water. I was dehydrating at a very high rate. I was dehydrating at a very, very, very high rate. And as we continue to go up, continue to go up, continue to go up, continue to go back. And I was still working at the same time. I would stop and see some nice features and take a picture, take another picture, take another picture. And beloved of God, what I learned from this is that the moment we align ourselves to God in our weakness, the Lord is able to be ma to make us strong in our weakness. The Lord is able to use our weakness for his own purposes and his own plans. He's able to lift you and give you strength and give you stamina like you've never had before. As we went up that mountain, as we went up that mountain, then I settled somewhere and I sat down. And as I sat down, my god this was time for going down as i was sitting down here the guide that i was with me i say to him the reason because he kept asking me it's very heavy and i said yes can i carry it for you i said no then i reached a place i said i had the words in my spirit I am a sign. Hey, so I said to the man, even the omtu anakata kuweka dhambi chini. This is how man does not want to put his sin down. He doesn't want this was my guide at that place. I said to him that this this when I was with Phineas coming down, I said this is what man does not want to put his burden down. He wants to keep walking with it. And as we were coming down this hill, this man clearly was understanding what I was teaching him. 
because he had seen a practical example. A man who went up Mount Olulokwe with 10 kilograms of weight and came down with the 10 kilograms of weight completely, completely spent. All my energy was gone. But I thank God because the word that went into the into that village. The pastor said, the pastor climbed up the mountain with a big load. And he came back with a big load. And all that the sign and the message was, is put down the burden. Don't carry with it. But man is carrying the burden. Say, I don't want to leave it. It's mine. It's sweet. I want to. I want to carry. I want to carry. So blamelessness cannot be in the same sentence with you. Though you need to understand that the Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from them whose work is blameless. Child of God, as we end this broadcast, I come to mention to you from Psalm 84. And I mention this to believers and intercessors. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose work is blameless. May the Lord give you blamelessness. And for those of you watching, you are not born again. Being born again is the greatest transaction ever. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Would you pray with me now? Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Shalom. Please do uh, follow the YouTube channel, Malcolm David, and be able to get more testimonies, more uh, wonderful message from the Lord. We continue on. We have, we have several more episodes to go until we get to 150 of 150 season 8 <laughs> hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah. hear my prayer Lord God Almighty listen to me God of Jacob look on our shield O Lord Look with favor on your anointed one. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>